Time now for an in-depth look at the market news on this first trading day of 2022. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Dr. Yang jun Sok, Professor of Economics at the Catholic University of Korea. Professor Yang, Happy New Year. Thank you for coming on today. Happy New Year and happy to be here. Well, let's go back to last Friday, which was the year's last trading day on Wall Street. Uh, the markets uh, did not end on a high note for the day, but they weren't far off the latest record high. The S&P down by about a quarter percent, but for the year up 28 or 29 percent, including if you include dividends. What's the story in the global markets as we start the new year? Okay, well, as you mentioned, S&P, Dow, and NASDAQ all fell on Friday, uh, but S&P and Dow uh, especially were at or very near their historical high, so uh, presumably this was due to uh, profit-taking. For the year, all three indices had three straight positive year, and the yearly gain for S&P was 26.89%. Dow was 18.7% and NASDAQ was 21.4%, so they all had very strong years. The reason that they had very strong years is thought to be strong corporate earnings. Uh, the uh, corporate earning index uh, rose by 45.1% last year. That's the highest annual earnings growth rate for the index since the uh, beginning of the tracking of this index in 2008. And this, in turn, is probably due because U.S. spending was very high in 2021. Uh, it started out as revenge spending, the so-called pent-up demand, uh, but it continued uh, strong throughout the year. That's presumably because there was a lot of uh, uh, not only pent-up demand, but a lot of savings and a lot of assistance from the government that took place in 2020 and parts of 2021. Uh, energy and real estate stocks led S&P, Home Depot and Microsoft stocks led the Dow, and Alphabet and Meta and Apple. Alphabet and Meta are what used to be called Google and Facebook. They led the NASDAQ. Um, the uh, Most analysts forecast that U.S. will uh, continue to have a strong market in 2022. Uh, they seem to be shrugging off the uh, supply bottlenecks, transportation bottlenecks, and the coronavirus, including the new Omicron variant. But they are concerned about inflation. It seems that they're not worried about inflation itself as much as uh, what, what will this induce the Fed to do, notably how many times will it raise the interest rates. Uh, for Europe, uh, for the year, DAX rose nearly 8%. CAC rose by about 29%. That's the best year they had since 1999. FTSE 100 rose by 14%. That's the uh, biggest gain in five years. Uh, and then Asia, Nikkei uh, went up by 5%. That's the uh, highest. Uh, they ended up with the highest year-end level since 1989. Uh, but they're still about 25% below the uh, uh the historic highs uh, just before the uh, stock market burst 32 years ago. Shanghai went up 4.8% for the year. Ha uh, Hang Seng was down 14%. That's the worst in a decade. And that's partially because of the problems that they're having in the real estate market, especially with the uh, Evergrande Group, uh, which, uh, is going, uh, which may be going into default. Yeah, as you say, uh, the, the CAC in France was a, a really uh, outstanding performance this year. Um, sobering uh, numbers there, as you say, on, about Japan's market, though. Uh, here in Korea, it was a strong start to the session uh, for the new year. Uh, but in the end, uh, pairing those gains uh, somewhat, ending with uh, the KOSPI about four-tenths of a percent higher, uh, some energy and infrastructure shares doing well today. Uh, tell us about the domestic market. Okay, well, Cosby it, uh, went up by 0.37%. It ended today at 2,988.77. So they haven't gone back to the uh, 3,000 level yet, though it did hit above 3,000 for part of the day. Individuals and foreigners bought, institutions sold. For the year, Cosby's performance was 3.6%. That's 18th in G20, but it did outperform the uh, Morgan Stanley Capital International Asian Index. Uh, which went down by 7.4%, so at least we didn't go into negative. Uh, but, however, note that uh, even though Kospi's 3.6% performance doesn't sound like much, uh, if we uh, calculate it back from the uh, pre-pandemic highs around uh, February and March 
in 2020, Kospi is up 31%. So it went up a lot during 2020. It just didn't go up that much during 2021. However, individual investors, according to the uh, Korean exchange, uh, seem to have lost money. They bought about 76 trillion won's worth of stocks, uh, 65 trillion in Kospi, 11 trillion in Kostak. Uh, but the uh, stocks that these individual investors, the so-called uh, Gemi bought, uh, didn't seem to perform very well, which is a bit surprising because the uh, stocks that these individuals bought were some of the biggest stocks in Korea. Samsung Electronics, Samsung Batteries, uh, Hyundai Mobis, Kakao, and Hyundai Motors, uh, they all registered negative growth for the year. Kostak uh, it went up again, 0.37%. It ended today at 1037 0.83 individual spot, institutions and foreigners sold for the year. It went up by 6.8%. But again, if we calculate it from the pre-pandemic highs of February and March of 2020, it went up by 49%. So again, it wasn't a very hot year this year, but coupled with the growth in 2020, uh, both stocks are doing extremely well. Well, over to China, uh, Professor, some issues that you mentioned before. Uh, real estate development companies face payments this month of almost $200 billion in interest and wages. Uh, this continues to be a risk for some other economies, possibly including Korea's. Uh, Evergrande Group is, of course, the most high profile of these companies. But how do you see these issues uh, being resolved? Okay, well, the uh, direct effect on Korea is not going to be much uh, because Korea does have very few investment in uh, Chinese real estate-related stocks. Uh, Korean exports to China, again, it probably won't affect Korean exports all that much because most of Korean's exports are in intermediate parts rather than direct consumer goods. Uh, so as long as Chinese exports are doing well, Korea exports should be doing well and effect on Korea should be muted. But their uh, effect on Korea, general effect on Korea may be possible. Uh, international investors may be turned off by Asia or it may be turned off uh, by Kore in Korean stocks because we are so, in a sense, tied in with China. Uh, as far as how will China go, Morgan Stanley just came out with a report saying that this year China may not be doing as bad as it did last year. Uh, it, make, uh, it is uh, making preparations uh, for the uh, real estate problems. They point out four factors which uh, may say, uh, which uh, say that China will probably be better than this year. These four factors are China uh, government and central bank is putting a pause on tightening. And second, there is some relief going to be uh, some relief for the real estate sector, including uh, government has given orders that uh, banks should increase mortgage loans and lower lending rates and uh, regional governments should relax purchase restrictions on real estate, and they are beginning to have managed debt restructuring process uh, in place. Uh, they had part of that for Evergrande. Uh, third factor is that they're going to ease energy targets, especially after the uh, Winter Olympics. And fourth, everybody expects China to have strong exports this year. Uh, what can Korea do to uh, possible uh, get around these possible negative effects on China, well, uh, there's not much they can do, but government obviously should continue to monitor what's going on. Also, uh, we should pay very careful heed to real estate and housing market because that's our weakness as well. Uh, and we need to bring down uh, the uh, high prices in the housing market uh, for the possibility that there is going to be a bubble, in which case uh, we want to bring down the housing prices rather slowly, um, engineer a soft landing rather than a bubble burst. Well, finally, Professor, it's the first week of 2022, the year of the Black Tiger. Uh, we'll see a meeting uh, this week of government ministers on the real estate market. Also, details of revisions to the tax laws and possible measures to deal with rising prices at the Lunar New Year, which is when households typically do a lot of spending. What's on your radar in the days ahead? Okay, well, the uh, inflation always... Uh bumps up uh, during the uh, just before the Lunar New Year, mostly because of the food prices. And we're seeing that already. It's going to be especially tough this year because of the uh, uh, global high inflation overall. Uh, but uh, it is uh, 
seems to be following a annual trend as well. Uh, for statistics in Korea, in t- on Tuesday, uh, there's going to be online shopping statistics for November. Uh, and uh, in, uh, Wednesday, on Wednesday, there will be foreign reserves uh, at the end of December. Um, and then for the U.S., some interesting statistics will be job opening and labor turnover over statistics for November. And then FOMC meet, uh, minutes, the Fed minutes for December uh, meeting will be revealed on Wednesday. And the employment and wage figures for December for the United States will be out uh, on uh, end of the week. So we'll see how the uh, global recovery is going by what's happening in the United States. All right, Professor, we'll have to leave it there for today and go through those figures and policies with you next time. Thank you, as always, for uh, coming on. We appreciate it. Thank you.